it's Boy Lamar in San Francisco, and I'm here with, of course, a very dear friend of mine and a favorite from RuPaul's Drag Race Season 1, the Sunshine Hi! <laughs> I was literally the first one to say that, and then Alaska took it from me, but it's okay because she's Stolen. my sister. Stolen! Stolen! No, I love her. So, Anjana, you just moved to San Francisco from Los Angeles. Tell us about your decision. Um, I wanted a life change, and San Francisco was the next best thing. So, I'm just kidding. Uh, I have been coming up here. Next best thing to what? New York City. Um, uh, yeah, okay. I get it, I get it. Fair? True. Fair. Fair enough. Okay, I lived there for six years, so I can say that. No, um, I've always wanted to live in San Francisco for like the last, what, since 2010. Yeah. I made the choice to move to LA, and then. After coming up here for as often as I do, I finally just told my husband we're moving and it took us like six weeks to decide and we hired some Polish, Polish, no, po Polish. What's the word? Polish. From Poland? Yeah, Polish. From Poland? Yeah, from Poland. <laughs> Polish. Polish. Like sausages. Not Polish, but Polish. Like sausages. We hired, Polish sausages. We hired Polish movers and then that was that. Wow. It's exciting, I know. My life is very exciting. Your life is exciting, so... Um, it's really not. <laughs> Don't be fooled. But you have a husband, you have like 400 animals. You have, yes. a, oh you have a gorgeous apartment. Yeah, thank you. Um, I live in the barn. Um, just bought it, actually, outside. You live in the middle of a... Like, okay, this is a one interviewer, <laughs> one interviewee, one silent audience. I live, I live in Petalima, actually. I bought a barn and I have 400 <laughs> I, you know what, by the way, like... Are I'm, you editing this? No, I may not edit that out. Like, <laughs> my boots are really big, right? Are they? Doggy! I will take I'll take him too. This is this is like, yeah, she's adopting this animal that just walked in. Um, Alright, so... This is not on. unlike when I interviewed Willem and every one second she was like pointing at something else. Have you watched oh. season 7 of RuPaul's Strike Race? I have watched season 7 oh. of okay. RuPaul's Strike Race. Okay, the dog can stay because she's quiet, <laughs> but you, not so quiet, okay? So thank you. <laughs> All right. have, have you watched RuPaul's Drag Race Season 7? Yes, I have. And what are your thoughts? Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> did you go to the reunion and the finale? Mm, no, I did not go Oh, that's to... right, you have a legit reason. You were packing. I did. Yeah, I right. was packing my apartment to move to this great city of San Francisco, which, by the way, we drove three times on Thursday night to drop off some shit and then drove back on Friday morning and it literally took me like, what is it, like a six hour drive? It's a six hour drive. It took me 10 hours each way because I'm Asian and literally, <laughs> and then we drove again on Saturday. It was the longest drive of my life. You are like many of your sisters from Drag Race who are sidestepping questions about this season. Why? Oh, no, no, no. I'm not sidestepping the question. You asked me if I've watched it. What do I think of it? I think it's Quasi Da. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, no, I'm actually, I don't know. I don't, like, I think my favorite season was season three. Yeah, that was really fun. That was actually the way, like, and Raja then, Manila. So, right. And so, and then, you know, there's a couple other seasons that I like, but like, I'm just like any other watcher. Like, I need to be pulled in a way that it gravitates me towards something. And unfortunately, not as much this season. Although I do love Ginger Minch. Everything that was fun about this season happened on Untucked, which nobody is watching. Yeah, because they, yeah. Yeah, I mean, did no, you watch Untucked? No, I don't watch it. I mean, like. It's on YouTube, you guys. Exactly. But. Hi, we're back. We are back. <laughs> We had a malfunction. We are back. Poyo has a 16 gig iPhone. <laughs> I got a 32 gig, how'd you know? <laughs> and it, it is filmed on my phone. They don't even sell 32s, she's lying. I it's see. either a 16 or a 64 or a 128. I'm Asian, I built these things. Yeah, I my, know. Oh, my, my phone's like... Okay, you gotta go. Bye, honey, you gotta go. <laughs> Spaz! <Hey>, Security! <laughs> Turn this off. We're gonna... Did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> I got the last part. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> okay, we're back again. We are back again. I may or may not leave so many of these things in. There was an intoxicated individual who sometimes, like, just being nice doesn't work, right? Right. But you wouldn't know so, anything about oh, that. Because sorry, she's she still here. Supposedly still here. Please stop talking. Please stop talking about her. You can't talk about me. <laughs> I'm trying to not know anything about being a total bitch because she I'm a is sweetheart. America's sweetheart. Not really. 
You don't so, see me behind closed doors. Okay. Since you came out as being HIV positive on the series, other people have followed suit, Trinity K. Bernay. And I wanted to ask if you continue to get the kind of emails that I know that you initially got, the outpouring of people who are connecting with you, finding you an inspiration. Yeah, I think in the beginning there was a lot more messages that were coming in, mm -hmm. and now that people are re-watching the show, re-watching the episode, re-watching my season, and then now it's being played in different outlets all over the world, I'm getting new messages, and I'm just really happy to be able to inspire and, you know, put my story out there to hopefully help someone that was going through what I was going through at the time when I actually said that I was, that I am HIV positive on the show. You know, I didn't really realize how much of an impact it was going to make until it did and it happened. So I'm happy to have done it for myself, but I'm more excited that I'm able to be on a platform to help other people. You had no idea that when they do all these countdowns, like you're like always like number two or number five, it's like that jaw-dropping moment. Well, yeah, I and you know, the whole experience in me doing it wasn't because I needed to validate, you know, my experience on Drag Race or validate my, me being top five of jaw-dropping, whatever. I did it because emotionally it affected me in a way that was really impactful and so it just kind of came out naturally. Do things feel more scripted than they did the first year with you guys? I don't think it's scripted, but I think because um, queens have a background idea from watching previous seasons, they kind of know how to maybe play to camera mm -hmm. the way that they right. need to. Because at the end of the day, let's be honest, this is a television show, so you either are entertaining or you're not. So, yeah. so you have to play which part you want to play. So many more of the girls in subsequent seasons after season one seem like they come on with the character in mind that they want to play. I want to be the bitch, I want to be the ingenue, I want to be the seasoned bitchy queen. I don't know that for a fact because I don't really, you know, I'm not close to a lot of the girls right. going into the season, mm -hmm. so I only meet them because they become the sisterhood of Drag Race. So, I don't know actually if they have a game plan in mind and keep enjoying myself watching it. I'm going to share with you guys who are viewers something that you may not know because of the fact that when I first met on China many, many years ago, uh, through MySpace, girl, that's a long time yeah. ago. I thought you were going to say friends to her. No, we did yeah. not. We met through MySpace. I know. But she had told me, oh. Um, when I was filming the season one, I kept saying into the little microphone, like, if you don't make me look like the sweetheart, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> I did. It, it worked. Was, yeah, it worked. No, but I think, you know, queens can only blame editing so much. I mean, they can't obviously edit you if you don't give them what to edit you with. Mm -hmm. Right? So like, it's it's really what you give the camera and what they record. So really, it's not the editing. If, if you're a queen that's bitchy, then you're gonna be bitchy on the show. If you're nice, you're gonna be nice. I had bitchy moments, but it, you know, it never really sh Did you? I don't I even did. remember those. Yeah, uh, I was frustrated a few times. I was, you know, during that group challenge when I was the leader, I was very determined to win and I was very leader and I was like, this way or that way, but, but fair. So, I was! Dominating Asian! What? Ask her husband. This way, that way. <laughs> My husband loves me, okay? Yes, he does. That's true. So. Now, um, I wanted to, you are one of the queens that is so beloved on the seasons, uh, of all the seasons, you're so beloved, but you've, in many ways, chosen your other career over your drag career. Yeah. Um, and I wanted you to talk to the fans about that because we don't get to see as much of you as we that's do others. Very because true, of that. and thank you for asking. I think a lot of people don't realize that I have a full time job that I love and I want to continue to do it and I'm going to continue to do it. And drag for me is something that's fun and it's something that's artistic and I will continue to do drag. However, it's it's most it, drag for me is it's more of a hobby. And, you know, more power to the people that have drag as their career. For me, my career is, is the latter. So, um, I'll continue to, perf to perform, but I, I want to pursue a career in visual merchandising like I have. And I want mm -hmm. to continue that as I grow older and older and older because 
when I'm 65, I want to retire with a 401k that's going to pay my bills and don't have to work at 65. So. Well, it's interesting because as she mentioned, she's a visual merchandiser, but if you've watched her drag and who hasn't, you recognize that her love for fashion and like the visuals really play into all your head pieces. Yeah, and except for I'm missing a gem over here. But Nobody noticed that. I know, I have to point it out because I've noticed it. <laughs> now, what is ahead for you? What should they be looking for? So, I just moved to San Francisco and I just had my very first show here at The Lookout with a group who's writing on the AIDS life cycle, my group of friends called Team Boo Boo, Yay. and we were able to do a fundraiser for them with a gaggle of girls here at the lookout. And so I think that I did so good that I'm gonna have a monthly show here, we never know. That would be, <laughs> that would be super exciting, once a month, on China. Yeah, and, why not? And I'm gonna give, a, this is a personal plug for me, I, every year, produce a fantastic fundraising and charity drag pageant. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be a judge on J July 12th. Sunday, July 12th at San Francisco's I need to get that Oasis Nightclub. Sorry, Absolutely. I need to get that day off. But so. it's, it's gonna be amazing. It's like Jack McEnroe, Richard Hallmark, both from Project Runway, yeah. you, and I am working on another one of my Drag Race friends in hopes, fingers crossed, she'll be able to come in and do it too. It's gonna be a good time. It's gonna be a great time. I've known this bitch for too long. A long time. We always have a great time. <laughs> we really do. We I'm really so excited do. that you're in my town now. Thank you. I guess me our too. town now. Yeah. So. Our town. All right, follow her on Gina, at on Gina, Instagram, Twitter, all those fun places. And it's on Facebook too, isn't it? Yeah, Just... on Gina, the official fan page. The official fan page. All right, everybody, I'm Poirot Lamar. This is on China. Thank you, and I want to say again, just because we just finished, good luck to Team Boo Boo for the AIDS life cycle. I love you guys. Oh. I love you, Poirot. I love you too. Bye. Bye.